Today I'm going to explain how to read a floating point 32 number from a string representation. So imagine you have a string containing something like 10.012 and you want to read this and convert it into a floating point 32 number. Uh, and then perhaps use this number with uh, floating point operations or uh, other operations that I've shown in previous videos. So let's take a look at this function. I uh, expect to have uh, the string in uh, RSI, so this would be a uh, pointer to the string, uh, and in output uh, we'll have in racks the floating point 32 number, so it actually uh, is going to be into EAX, since RUX is 64 bit. And in uh, RSI, uh, we'll have the position after the number. So RSI will also be changed. And uh, this is something that also happened with uh, the function to read uh, integer from string. So let's take a look at what's happening. Um, first, I'm uh, saving the registers that are being modified by this function. And obviously, at the end, uh, they will be restored. And then uh, we start here uh, to check if the string contains the sign or not. And this is something that uh, I also did uh, when reading an integer number from a string. So uh, in this case, uh, I'm going to set into R10 either 0 or 1. Uh, 0 if uh, we have uh, either a plus or no sign, so this will correspond to a positive number and one if uh, we explicitly have a minus sign present in the string. Okay, uh, so uh, first I'm reading a character, uh, the first character pointed to by RSI. Uh, I'm reading this into AL since uh, it's a character byte. So I'm comparing if uh, AL is plus uh, if uh, so, I uh, move here to next character, so I'm incrementing RSI, and that's it. Then I'm uh, comparing if it's not plus, maybe it's a minus. Uh, if not, so it's not plus, it's not minus, then uh, we don't care, so we don't increment RSI, and we just move here. However, if it's a minus, uh, we move 1 into R10, so that's our cue that it's a negative number, and we also increment RSI. After that, I'm uh, calling uh, win32 from string. I presented this function in the previous video, so if you have not watched it, uh, you should watch it after this video. So basically, this will uh, read. Uh, the integer from the string and it will uh, return the value into rocks and uh, it's going to read uh, all the digits that uh, it sees and it will stop either after the string if uh, it encounters for example a space uh, or uh, it will stop if it encounters a dot a decimal so uh, it has read this into rocks, and I'm storing uh, rocks in uh, this temporary location. And I can show you this one. It's right here. So it's just a temporary location, nothing special. Uh, but if you remember from my previous videos, uh, we cannot access the floating point operations uh, with uh, the regular CPU registers. So we need a memory location to store uh, rocks temporarily. And then I'm loading this into the floating point unit. So I'm using uh, FILD. So that would be an integer load. So this integer is uh, then loaded in the floating point unit and automatically it gets converted into a floating point number. So at this moment we have the integer part uh, converted to a floating point number and stored in the floating point unit. 
So uh, I'm continuing to check if uh, we have a decimal dot. If not, then uh, we are done. And let's see what's happening. So here we are done, and this means uh, again we extract the number, the floating point number, into the temporary location, and then I'm reading this into EAX. And uh, I'm also checking if uh, we detected a negative number, uh, then I'm setting uh, the sign bit. And that's all. I'm uh, restoring the registers and returning. Now, uh, assuming that uh, we detected a decimal uh, dot, uh, then uh, we need to read the decimals. And uh, as you can imagine, if we have, for example, dot one, two, three, four, uh, we can read these uh, again as an unsigned integer. So uh, we'll have something like uh, 1,234, yeah, corresponding to dot 1234. So then obviously uh, we need uh, to convert this uh, to a fraction. So let's see what's happening here. Uh, this is um, uh, loaded again in the floating point unit, we use the same trick, uh, first storing rocks in the temporary variable and then loading it into the floating point unit. So now in the floating point unit, uh, you can see my comment here, we have in uh, ST0 this uh, integer that corresponds to the decimals, and then in ST1 we have the integer part. But now uh, we need to divide uh, this uh, decimal integer uh, to something like uh, one followed by a number of zeros uh, equal uh, to the number of decimals. So, for example, if we had 0 0.1, uh, we read one, so we need to divide this by 10. If we had uh, 123, uh, so 1, 2, 3, uh, we uh, need to divide 123 by uh, 1,000. Yeah? So 1 followed by uh, an amount of zeros equal to the number of decimal. And uh, this is happening here. Uh, I'm uh, doing a loop. Uh, perhaps uh, you can try to implement it uh, better, but I don't know. I thought it was easy enough and it's not going to be uh, a lot of decimals. So um, what's happening, I'm uh, multiplying uh, rocks, which initially is 1, by uh, R8, which is uh, initially 10. And uh, so it will be 1 uh, multiplied by 10, multiplied by 10, multiplied by 10, uh, until the number of uh, decimals. So we got, uh, so we get into rocks, uh, this uh, number 10 to the power of uh, number of decimals. And then uh, we also uh, load this into the floating point unit, uh, doing the same trick. We store it tempo in a temporary memory location, then we load it. So uh, now in the floating point unit, we have in ST0, 10 to the power power of number of decimals, in ST1 an integer corresponding to the decimals, in ST2 uh, the integer part. So now I'm uh, dividing, so in ST0 we have uh, the fraction, so it's going to be uh, 0 0.1234, uh, whatever. And in ST1 we still have the integer part, so we add those and we got uh, now the final number. And uh, now we store it, we load it into EAX. This is the same code that you saw earlier for the case where there were no decimals. And as previously, I'm checking if uh, R10 uh, was uh, set to 1. Uh, if it was, then uh, we need to make sure it's a negative number. So I'm just uh, doing an OR here in order to set the first bit, which is the 
sign. And remember, it's uh, 32 bits, so I'm just setting this into EAX. So after that, uh, we have a return, and that's all. So let's also take a look at the small test. So I have here a string containing some numbers. As you can see, they are separated by one space. Uh, also at the end, there is a space, and there must be uh, some end character, uh, because remember, we are reading uh, until we no longer see any numbers. So we need uh, some space or some other character. And I'm also setting here the number of numbers, uh, and we have 12 numbers uh, in this string. So we have this main program quite small actually. Uh, I'm uh, setting into RSI the pointer to the string in RCX, the numbers of numbers in this string. Uh, and uh, we have a loop here. It ends here with this loop statement. Uh, and remember, loop uh, will decrement uh, RCX until it reaches zero. Uh, and for each number, it uh, calls float 32 from string. Uh, then uh, it will uh, convert it back to a string using uh, a function that I discussed uh, a while ago. I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, and uh, it will display uh, this number. And because uh, I'm reusing uh, RSI here, I uh, pushed it on the stack and restored it. And uh, finally, we need to increment RSI since uh, we ended up uh, on the separator, on the space. So we need to increment it to move to the next number. And that's it. So let's see uh, what's happening. And as you can see, uh, we got the numbers here with uh, either plus or minus. And uh, you can check these are indeed uh, the numbers that were defined in uh, our string. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't, for, don't forget to like and subscribe uh, to get noticed when I make new, new, new ones. So see you next time. Bye.